What is going on everyone? Jossie Lin Jay here. Thank you so much for checking out this channel. I have been getting a lot of questions regarding computer science, software development, and engineering. And I am super excited to take the time out to answer your questions and give you career advice and academic advice. Like, so if you're a high school student who is interested in becoming an engineer or a computer scientist, I'm gonna give you some advice. If you are someone in college and you're trying to figure out like what type of job you want after college, I can give you advice. And for those who want to have a career change, I can give you all advice too. So before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button, whatever you wanna do. It will be really dope because you all can join the family and you all can stay connected with me continue to give me advice on what type of videos you would like to see or just ask me questions in the comments. So I'm literally just gonna go through my comment section and I'm going to just pick some questions to answer because one thing I've noticed in life is a lot of times the question that you're asking is the same question that like 50 other people are asking and just wanna know the answer to. So when do you go to sleep? <laughs> I try to get eight hours of sleep because as an engineer, your job is pretty demanding and you need to make sure your brain is well rested and your body is well rested so you can really crush the next day. All right, next question. Okay, I need to learn how to code, LOL, where to start. Okay, this may sound really cliche, but the first place you want to start, oh, sorry about that. The first place that you wanna start is a Google search, like a simple Google search. So if you wanna learn uh, web development, right? Like the basics, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, I would literally go on Google and type in HTML tutorial for beginners or um, simple website tutorial for beginners, something along those lines. The more specific you get, the better like search you're gonna get. And then I really like to use a site called W3Schools. W3Schools is this amazing website that has tutorials on so many different programming languages, everything from like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Angular, and so much more. And they just give you the basics of what you need. And not only do they show you how to build different components and elements, within a programming language, they also explain like what is going on, which is really cool. And the interface is really easy to follow, which is a super important aspect of the website because if you have a website that is really bad or the explanation is bad or there's no explanation at all, you're really just coding without any like understanding of what you're actually programming. Also, believe it or not, I like to use YouTube because I'm a visual learner. So I, I do W3Schools as well, and I use like Tutorials Point, and when I wanted to learn C Sharp, I would go to like C Sharp Corner, which is like a specific website to learn how to do C Sharp. But I really like YouTube. Even though it's like hard to sit and watch a video for an hour, I promise you it'll help you because you have a lot of experts that teach you how to program. So. Um, really detailed things that you wouldn't necessarily learn from like just going to a site and just following along a tutorial. You can learn so much more from that expert. So I would advise your Google search with like W3Schools and I would advise a YouTube search. Kind of similar to Google search, but you get the idea. Okay, someone said, I want to become a software developer and I see you like that job. I have one question. Is this work hard and how much? Okay, so that is a really good question. I would say preparing to become a software developer or engineer was probably more difficult than the job itself. And it's not that the job itself isn't difficult because it is and in a lot of aspects it's even more difficult. However, think of it this way, when you're in school as a software engineer, major, computer scientist, electrical engineer, whichever, you aren't just focusing on your major, but you have like gen eds to do and you have organizations to focus on and you have work and you're trying to like learn this really tough major and finish these projects 
along with doing other work. Whereas as a person who is in industry and is working full time in this specific field, I'm focusing solely on that field on top of the fact I have a bunch of people around me who are professionals and experts in that field that can help answer me questions that would take me like 10 hours to figure out by myself at school compared to at work. I can like learn it on the fly and I have all, not all the time in the world, but I have way more time to focus on a more difficult subject within computer science or software engineering than I did as a student. I hope that answers the question. So the work is difficult and not all of it is super duper hard. Um, you have administrative tasks as well, but you have a great group. If you have a great group around you, a great group of coworkers around you, it can make it a lot easier, but it's still not easy in a sense. Now, the question everybody wants to know, even though it's like everywhere in the internet, but I'm still gonna answer it. Okay, how much money does a junior software engineer make? That is a good question. I mean, you know, money is a reason why people become engineers, especially become software engineers or computer scientists. So I'm, it's a, it's a vague answer, right? So it depends on where you are. You gotta look at the cost of living. So I feel like the range is anywhere between like mid forties, uh, low fifties to like maybe 80K. And the data's a bit skewed because a lot of your software companies are in major cities, especially major cities along the coast that have a high cost of living. So for example, a software engineer in Houston may make, a junior software engineer in Houston may make 60K starting out or 55K starting out. And a, so a junior software engineer in New York City may be making 110K starting out. So it really depends on where you live. If you're in an area whose cost of living is higher, it's gonna be much higher. So I hope that answers the question there. I don't want to give you just a specific average, right? Like you go online and it may say the average is 70 something K, but the data is skewed. So if you're not making 70 K and you're living in like Cincinnati starting out, that's okay because your 50 K or your 55 K will probably stretch more than someone's 95 K in Manhattan. Ooh, okay. This is a really good question. Um, this is actually probably one of my favorite questions, but someone said, why did you choose software? I'm having a hard time deciding between studying electrical and electronic engineering or mechanical engineering. Okay, so I'll never forget, it was freshman year and there was a banquet going on. And um, basically what we did was we had dinner with faculty and other uh, incoming freshmen who are uh, computer science majors or electrical engineering majors. So you basically sit at your designated like department table. Now I'll never forget my department chair um, and my department chair is a department chair of not only computer science but computer science and electrical engineering. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget he was like, you know, you look at society, you look at the world and computer science is like where the world's going. Like that's the direction the world is heading. And that's a huge reason why I was like, you know what, you're right. All these, everyone needs a website, um, all these different apps. I mean, even cars are controlled by microprocessors and controllers who are programmed by systems engineers and software engineers. And I was like, you know what, that's, I wanna do that. And I felt like the field is very lucrative. The internship opportunities are amazing. Don't get me wrong, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, they have an amazing field too, but there are a bunch of mechanical engineers out there. There are um, electrical engineers also do computer science stuff as well, so they can kind of dabble in software engineering too. But I really enjoy computer science because I said, as a computer scientist, I can do so many like jobs. Like I can work at a mechanical engineering firm. Someone needs a database handle. Someone needs an application built, but not every company needs an electrical engineer. You know, like not every, a marketing company doesn't need an electrical engineer, but they may need a web developer, right? They may need an app built. Um, uh, a software company may not need a mechanical engineer, but they definitely need software engineers. A law firm definitely doesn't need a mechanical or electrical engineer, but they may need a software engineer, 
to maintain their app, to maintain all the um, customers that they have and all the data that they've got. You get the idea? By the way, I apologize if I haven't answered any of your questions in the comment section yet. I promise I will get to all of your questions. I promise I will. And I know some people have already answered these questions in the comment section, but of course I can't answer them like as well as I can with this video. So I didn't wanna just give you all like, you know, a quick response. I could try to respond as best as I can in the YouTube comment section, but I really wanted to dedicate this video to you all. And I wanted to be more elaborate with some of the answers that I have. Okay, next question. Someone asked, um, basically they wanna pursue a career in software engineering and they have a question regarding should they major in computer science or just as a software engineer with an emphasis in machine learning. Man, you are on your way to be very successful in life with whichever path you pick. So I recommend computer science. I'm not trying to be biased, but see, it's almost a little bit contradictory. Wait, is that is that the word? It's almost a contradiction. But so computer science isn't built to prepare you to be a software engineer. It's, it builds you to become like a computer scientist, if that makes sense. The thing is, most like, most jobs out of college for computer scientists are software engineering jobs. However, that isn't always the case. Like I have a friend who's doing like data analytics and um, like he interned at Quicken Loans for um, data analytics and computer science got him that opportunity because we focus so much on like on um, algorithms, um, manipulating data, manipulating data, um, engineering, systems engineering. We have a breadth of pretty much everything. We don't just focus on programming. And also, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I know, software engineering isn't like a super accredited major around the country yet. It's going to be, and I know. Um, right now, uh, there are schools who are working on making it accredited, but I know computer science within the engineering college is accredited. Also, you may like software engineering now, but what if you want to be like, you know, you want to work on big data later or analytics later? Well, your strong math and science fundamentals that you learn during your computer science curriculum can help you get that job, which is why I focus on computer science. Now, don't get me wrong, if you major in software engineering, you're going to have a job probably the rest you're probably always gonna have a job I don't see why that would be a problem however if you want to have a broader like career path I would do computer science because you could do software engineering and a bunch of other things too also I remember uh, talking to a lot of my friends who were software engineers uh, or software engineering majors in college they didn't um, they didn't take as much math as me and they also didn't take some some of the engineering courses and there's nothing wrong with that, but I really appreciate that as much as it was a headache for me. Um, after getting my degree, I really appreciate the fact that I took like microprocessors and controllers and parallel computation because it, it opened up my mind to these other career paths. Like, oh, what if I want to be a systems engineer and I want to work for like, you know, um, you know, Audi one day or a car company one day and I want to be a systems engineer. So I've gotten this question a couple times. Um, what company do I work for and how is it? So I work for a company called Highland Software and the product we create is OnBase. And essentially we are a content services slash like enterprise content management company. And I really love it. Highland is like literally like the Google of Cleveland is like its nickname and it's been on Forbes like top 100 best companies to work for the last like four or five years. It's an amazing company with amazing people and it's so collaborative. We work in an agile type environment so there's a lot of communication. There's a lot of innovation that goes on. There's no micromanagement. If I think that this is a better approach to solve a software solution, even if I'm an intern or an intro developer like I am right now, my opinion and my voice matters. Okay, second to last question. How can you get an internship with no experience? All right, so 
For those who don't know, I did get an internship with no experience. However, what helped me get that internship was the side projects that I had and just the fact that I was going out and looking for a job as an 18 year old freshman. So that was, the company thought that that was impressive and if I was a recruiter, I would definitely feel like that's an impressive thing to do to get out of your comfort zone to work on your craft and become a better professional. So if I were you, what I would do is I would take a intro to programming class like your first semester and I would do some side projects, work on some apps. The project doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to work or at least definitely doesn't have to be perfect. But the fact that you're striving to do something outside of your curriculum shows that you have a passion for what you're doing. And I promise you that will help you get an internship. Also look online for companies that hire freshmen as interns. Also, if you're just looking for an internship and you're not a freshman, consider going to your career fair. And I, so someone in the professional services department at my university, he always told us, if um, you apply 30 places, 10 will reach out, and then usually people get 10 interviews from those 30 um, positions they apply to, and they get three offers. I think that is very true. However, it depends on like what kind of companies you're applying to. If you're applying to like 30 companies that are like, insanely competitive, the numbers might be a little bit different, but definitely um, critiquing your resume, sending your resume over to someone who um, is has a lot of experience in critiquing resumes and uh, templating out in resumes is really important because like that's the first thing recruiters look at is your resume. So if your resume isn't appealing, you're probably not gonna get moved to the stack, the good stack, right? You're probably gonna get moved to the bad stack. With that being said, that is all I have for you all. I hope this video was very informative and very helpful. I am just so passionate about this. Like this makes me so excited. And um, I love the direction my channel is going and I love that you all are supporting me. So um, let's continue to stay connected. Like I said, if you haven't already smashed that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and um, make sure you leave a comment below. I love hearing from you all and continue to ask me questions. I love it, I love you all. Have a blessed week. I will see you all soon. Peace.